So welcome, welcome to this uh, session. Again, this is the we're we're doing Bible research. We've had our first series was on a word search, uh, where we studied the word fellowship, and we got that I think out of Acts two forty two that they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and the fellowship, breaking of bread and prayers. We did a word study, and on that particular lesson, we we went very uh, carefully, slowly through all the different steps. I'm saying that because, again, coming to this one, you need to watch that one first. You need to watch the one, the lesson on fellowship first, because on this session we're not going to be going very slowly through those initial steps at all, uh, because we're going to actually have a go at doing this whole study in one lesson. Uh, and the second series we did, which was two lessons long, was uh, we we did it on a character study. We studied the person Enoch. And who found that as an exciting study? Yeah. There's people here who found that exciting. Yes. And I'm sure if you've watched it, it was too. So we, we studied the, the character, the person Enoch, showing you how you can study with the concordance, uh, using, uh, you can study to a person's character, looking at what we can learn from a person in the Bible. In this lesson, we're going to be doing a place study. We're going to be studying a certain place in the Bible. Because the pla there are places in the Bible, uh, their names are often very prophetic and what happens in those places develops a story, that God, a message that God wants us to understand. Amen? So, again, like every single time we start a study, we have a base text. We have a, a scripture verse that, we're, that has sparked us into this study. And so for today, where our scripture verse would be Micah, I mean not Micah, Matthew. Matthew. Sorry, I'm going back to where it came from. Matthew chapter 2, verse 5, and you could probably put verse 5 and 6 together. Matthew chapter 2, verse 5 and 6. Okay, Matthew chapter 2, verse 5 and 6. And I'll read it for you, these two verses. And so it says this, So they said to him, uh, and this is actually, the hymn is King Herod. So they said to King Herod, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. So what is the place? No, not Israel, Bethlehem. So we are going to study Bethlehem. Bethlehem is mentioned twice, in verse, once in verse 5, once in verse 6. And obviously it's an important place, amen, because the, uh, the wise men had come and they were seeking for the king of the Jews. And when the scribes and Pharisees and people were asked, uh, the scribes of the people and the pre chief priests, they inquired of where the Christ was to be born and so... Uh, the King Herod was inquiring from them where the Christ was to be born and they said to him in Bethlehem of Judah. So do you think this is an important place to study? Yes, it is. Yeah, of course it is, amen. Bethlehem. Okay, Bethlehem, the, place, the birthplace of the Messiah. So that's already a point we know. So the first thing we do, we get our concordance. This is the one, Strong's, with the best of Vines dictionary in it. Again, Check out the first series of lessons on, on fellowship and you'll get the, the full rundown on this book and the parts of this book, how to use it. So we're assuming that there is some knowledge of that as we come into this lesson. So here we, we go, we're going to now look in the first part of the concordance where it's got all the words of the King James Bible in English alphabetically listed. So we're going to look under B and we're going to look up Bethlehem. 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 Hallelujah. And uh, I might get somebody to help me. Yep, but I might get someone to help me just to show this up to the screen. Margaret's there. Margaret's there. So just to hold it in a place that Yasmin can see it so we come up close. Okay, so it looks a little bit like this. So this is the first part of the concordance where we're looking up this word Bethlehem. We're looking under all the bees, bees, and then... We come to Beth's, and there's a, there's a lot of places that begin with Beth, but then we come down to here, and we've got Beth, 
try and give it still Beth Lehem. And we see there's a number of verses all the way there. Then there's Bethlehem as one word by itself. Then there's Bethlehemite. Then there's Bethlehem Judah. So I'm going to tell you already, we're not going to study all of them because there's heaps of them that deal with Bethlehem here. But I'm going to also show you in this lesson how you selectively go through what you're going to study. Amen? Because you can already tell when you look through a lot of these ones, you can already tell what the sort of gist of it is. And so if it's just saying, oh, some certain person walked through Bethlehem, and it's, it's not really a person of significance, it's just part of a story, then you're not really going to go, well, I don't need to study that. That's not really relevant. I'm wanting to get the prophetic message of this place, Bethlehem. Amen? Okay. So come back here. So we've got Bethlehem, and you'll see that there's the first place in the concordance, like I showed you on the screen, has Beth with a hyphen, Lehem. And there's actually 24 times that that Beth Lehem is mentioned. And, but none of them match up with Matthew chapter 2 because they're all in the Old Testament. Are you with me? You look up all those references, they're all Old Testament references for Beth dash Lehem. But we'll come back to that just to see a few. Then there's the word Bethlehem as one word. Are you all with me in your concordance? You see that? Yep. yep. And when Bethlehem appears as one word, there's 15 of them, it says, by the word Bethlehem. And it's in this section that there is a reference to what we're looking at here, Matthew 2, verse 5 and verse 6. Are you with me? You're seeing this? So you'll, you'll, what? because this is our base text, Matthew 2, verse 5 and 6, we're wanting to start from there. Amen? So it's in the New Testament. So it's going to be a Greek New Testament name. And... Uh, and I would already be thinking it's going to make us go back into the Hebrew anyway because I would know that Bethlehem's origin is of a Hebrew origin. But we're going to start by looking at Matthew chapter 2, verse 5. So see under Bethlehem, find Matthew 2, verse 5 and 6. What's the reference number? Put your hand up so that Debbie can get you. So, there's a, so you're looking under the word Bethlehem. You're finding the, the scripture reference of Matthew 2, verse 5 or, and, and verse 6. And what's the reference number given? 965. 965. So that's the dictionary reference number. That's referring you to which dictionary? Put your hand up so Debbie can get to you. What dictionary is that going to be in, Darlene? What dictionary? The Greek. That's right. Because in your concordance, you've got a, Greek, you've got a Hebrew slash Aramaic dictionary and you've got a Greek dictionary. And the simple rule is Old Testament, Hebrew, New Testament, Greek. So we're going, because this is in Matthew chapter 2, we're going to the Greek dictionary number 965. And so if you remember, if you've got this concordance, I'll just show you quickly. You'll see here these black markers. So there's that one, that's the Hebrew dictionary. And then there's this one, it's the Greek Dictionary. So the Greek Dictionary is at the back, the Hebrew Dictionary is the first one. And it's got, on the very tops of the pages, you'll see it tells you which dictionary it is. So let's come back here. Okay, so we're going to the Greek Dictionary, number 965. So look up the number 965 in the Greek Dictionary. Give me a wave when you're there. Oh, steve -O's, he's a veteran now. He's getting there real quick. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so number 965, who would like to read out what's there? Put your hand up. No takers? You got it done? I haven't got it. All right. Well, let, let, okay, Rob. Okay, yep. Yeah. Catherine? Thank you. So it's firstly written in the Greek lettering, and then it says how many times does it appear? Eight times. So eight times. So in the New Testament, this word appears eight times, yep. Um, and the pronunciation is B A Y T A. Do you want that bit? Yep. Well, we could just do even in English letters. It's B A Y T H. No, no, no. That's the pronoun before that even. Didn't oh, B E T H L E E M. Yep. So it's B E T H L W E M. So that's the English uh, spelling. Spelling. That's what I was looking for of mm. the Greek word. Yep. Mm. And then it's got the pronunciation. Pronunciation is B A Y T H. B A Y T H. A hyphen. Yep. L E L E H. H. 
a hyphen e m Beth Lehem Hem Beth Lehem Beth Lehem So then what does it tell us and then it's, it cross references with the Hebrew yep um 1036 So it says of Heb of, of Hebrew, Hebrew origin. origin so it's of h e b o r dot number 1036 mm. yep and uh just tell us this we don't need to write it down so much but it just says place in Be palestine it's a place in palestine wow How about isn't that, that enlightening <laughs> <laughs> so so in the greek dictionary that's all it gives us it doesn't give us any meaning of that name it just goes but it does tell us that it's of a Hebrew origin, so we should go and check out the Hebrew origin of the word, shouldn't we? Because all it tells us here is it's a place in Palestine. So um, let's now go to the Hebrew one. Let's go back. So now we're going to do Strong's Concordance number 1036 in the Hebrew dictionary. So different dictionary now. Don't just flip a few pages over to 1036 in the Greek, otherwise you'll end up teaching false doctrine. <laughs> You'll start saying Bethlehem means something and it doesn't. So we go to the Hebrew Dictionary 1036. Hebrew Dictionary 1036. Hallelujah. So we're going to find out from the Strongs here. Yeah, I thought it was wrong, eh? It's actually, we found out, I think, a little typo in the um, concordance. It did say 1036, but it should be 1035. They missed it by one. Because uh, 1036 is Bethlehem, but 1035 is Bethlehem. Yeah. So there you go. Well, I think we picked up on a mistake. I don't know if Mr. Strong made the mistake or if the guys who've typed it. I think we'll do the guys who typed it. I think Mr. Strong was perfect. <laughs> yeah, he's got it right in the dictionary, 1035. Yes. Uh, is yours... Which, yeah, 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 it's 1035. Okay, so 1035. Now, this is amazing to me because I, I don't know how this actually works. Oh, maybe I do. But it reckons there's 411 times. It reckons. But I... Yeah, I have trouble believing it. <laughs> because I can't, when, when you look at the concordance part, unless it's translated as something totally different, there's not 411 of them. But anyway, that's, don't worry about it. It's not really relevant anyway for us. So then it's Bethlehem. And so you could put in um, Janet, B E Y T H. This is the actual spelling, by the way, not the pronunciation. B E Y T H. And then in the second word, L, capital L, E C H E M, Beth Lechem. Yep, E M. E M. Beth Lechem. Okay, and then it gives you the pronunciation again B A Y T H. B A Y T H dash. And then uh, L E H with an apostrophe against the H and a dash. And then K H E M, Chem, Bethlehem. I think it's one of those ch sounding words. Amen. And it tells you here, Janet, that it's from two different words. Obviously, you can even see the two different words there, Bethlehem. It's from 1004 and 3899. 1004 and 3899. So. Again, we, we yeah we can we can have a quick we could possibly have a quick look, but it's just showing you that this word is two words made a compound word, amen. And then what is the meaning? Who's got it there? Can see there? What's the meaning of this word? Put your hand up. Put your hand up. What's the definition? Yes, I see house of bread. Uh huh. House of bread. Oh, that's good. oh now we're getting somewhere. It's not just a place in Palestine. We do have a meaning. It means the house of bread. That sounds pretty cool and prophetic, doesn't it? Yeah. That get your um, get the anointing flowing in you. 
Oh, Bethlehem. It's the house of bread. Hallelujah. So there's bread in this place. Amen. So if you're, if you're just looking at the definition, what's, what's some little things you might even write as little notes already? What sparks off in you already when you think house of bread? So let, well, let's get a uh, microphone. Jesus is the bread. Yes, the bread so I'd, be think, I'd be thinking that too. I'd be thinking Jesus said, I am the bread. I am the bread of life. So I'll be like G John 6 verse, um, what is it? 35. John 6, 35 and verse 48. I am the bread. Food. And you <laughs> That's a bit carnal, isn't it? <laughs> yes, yeah, so it's fulfilling. There's bread there. There's, there's sustenance in Bethlehem. It's a place of sustenance, amen? Yep, but I'll, I'll definitely be thinking about, because already we know from our base text that, and we're going to look at it further, but that the prophets spoke that the Christ would be born in the house of bread. And so now Jesus is called, <laughs> I am the bread, amen? Amen. Amen. So, so, the, bread bread. the bread of life was born in the house of bread. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? He's the house. Yes, he's what makes the house of bread. Yes. And I was thinking the house of God. Why are you thinking the house of God? Because the house of bread, house of God. <laughs> that is a different study. You could look up Bethel, that's the house of God. But definitely... Um, stick to the bread. Stick to the bread. Yeah. Well, yes, yeah, so it's the house of bread. Jesus said he's the bread of life. What else do we know about bread that already you'd start to think about? Manna. Yeah, manna. But yeah, and like you were saying, sustenance. But think spiritually. Yeah, the, the word. Amen. So we'd say the word. Yep. So I'll just be putting this down as notes. It doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to use this for sure, but I'm already just thinking this place is called the house of bread. It's the place where the Messiah was born. So this is pretty awesome. Jesus is the bread. Jesus is the word. And that word is bread to us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus said, if you believe in me, you won't hunger. So my hunger is satisfied at Bethlehem. <laughs> Amen. We need to come to the house of bread. Hey, see, isn't it amazing? You just, you know one little thing like that. You can start, hey, hey, hang on. Yeah, maybe God's talking. Yeah, I know, but that's what, this is the step though. Is that already from this, you start, there's things that start firing off. So you're always, always studying with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And that's really all it gives us though. And then it just says it's a place in Palestine again. 103.6. So that's all it, that's all it gave us. Amen. So, yeah. Remember it said from 1004? So 1004 is the word bayeth or beth. Again, probably don't write this down, but it would be worth you looking at it sometime to see that bayeth means a house in a great variety of applications. It can mean a family. It can mean a house or a building, a household. So it's, got, it's very similar to the English way we would use house in that house refers to that building structure that is a house. But also we, you know, for, as for me and my house, we're not talking about the building. <laughs> yep, me and that building, we're going to serve the Lord. No, when we say me and my house, what are we referring to? My family, my household, my children, those who are with me that I have responsibility for even maybe as a father or a mother. As for me and my house. And so Bayeth has a similar, it's a house in a variety of applications. Can refer to the physical building, can refer to a family. And uh, what was that other one? 3899, was it? I'll just have a quick squiz. I didn't, a squiz, by the way, is a look. <laughs> a quick squiz. 3889 three, is a quick, quick look. Oh, that's an interesting word. 3899, eight, three, eight, sorry. Yeah, that's why I thought that was interesting. 3899 Lechem, it actually, it actually means food, especially bread or grain. So there you go. So Lechem, so I would put this as 3899, that's the Lechem part. It means food, especially bread or grain. Okay? So that's good. So that's a little bit, a little bit um, wider scope than just bread. It's food. The house of food. So Bethlehem is the house of food. Oh. So I, I, would, I, would, I would already be put in there, wow, the Messiah 
was born in the house of food because he would become the food for all the world. Hallelujah. House of Damper. House of Damper if you're in Australia. House of Ugali. Because it's the house of grain, by the way, that, that covers all the staple foods for all the world. Amen. House of grain. Because remember it means food, especially bread or grain. So maize is a grain if you're watching this in Kenya. So it could be the house of Ugali. Amen. And it's the house, it could be the house of rice <laughs> when you live in those places where rice is the staple grain. It's food, it's that staple food. Your daily bread type of food. Amen. Hallelujah. Give us this day our daily bread from the house of bread. Amen. Hallelujah. We've got to come to Bethlehem, hey? So now we want to go back to our concordance part and we want to start. So we've got this. We want to flick it over. All right, you got that? By the way, can you can you see that at all, or is it pretty tough on the zoom there? No, it's very good. It's very good. Great. Oh, what, what's good? Oh, yeah. That, good. Yep. Yeah. Sorry. I. I re yeah. Before I touched it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna flip. All good? All right. So we go back to our concordance and find Bethlehem again. And now we're going to do this study. Just, And we're not going to do it exhaustively. One, because of the sake of time. But two, because I do want to teach you that in your study, you've got to learn when it's a very big study to be selective. Otherwise, you're going to spend a lot of time on verses that, that aren't going to help you in bringing out what this is really about. Because there's sometimes just... It's just a place that someone travels through and it, there's no significance to the story as such. And so we want to look up Bethlehem, but we want, to be, we, want to, we want to be selective in our study. So we're going to study it in old and new, um, and we're going to do it fairly quickly. But I, in general, it's a good principle to look at the first mention of a word. In general. Sometimes it does, it, it, it's neither here nor there. But very often, when you look for the first mention of a word in the Bible, there's something very foundational to understand about that thing. And, and so I, I, I was really blessed when I, when I looked at this last night to see what the first mention was. So let's go So back where it says Beth-Lehem in your accordance. Comment. So remember, we split up our page, if you're taking notes, into three columns, we've got the reference, which will be the scripture reference. We've got the scripture or the text, and we put in a part of the text of that verse um, to help us get the, get the picture of where we're at in that verse. And then we're going to have a comment uh, on that. And it's from this study that that's how we are going to end up coming together with the teaching. So going to Bethlehem in your concordance, and it's the Beth-Lehem. You'll see it's all 1035, all the references, because it's the Hebrew Bethlehem in the Hebrew 1035. So what is the first reference? Put up your hand uh, to once you're there, and Debbie will get to you with the microphone. What is the first reference to Bethlehem in the Bible? You look like you have it. <laughs> uh, first reference is Genesis 35:19. That is correct. Genesis 35:19. All right, so let's go to Genesis 35, 19, and let's have a look. And uh, put up your hand to read, somebody. Yep, Anita, good job. So Genesis 35, 19, let's read. And they journeyed from Bethel, and there was but a little way to... For, sorry, 15. Genesis 35, verse 19. But, but you know what I'd like you to do, I'm just for the sake of context, I'd like you to read, you were going pretty good, but maybe just a bit sooner, go to verse 18 and 19. Okay. And it came to pass, as her soul was departing, for she died, that she called his name Benoni, but his father called him Benjamin. And Rachel died, and was buried in, in the way to Ephra. Which is Bethlehem. Which is Bethlehem. And you could read verse 20 as well, just for our sake. 
And Jacob set a pillar upon her grave. That is the pillar of Rachel's grave unto this day. Okay, so what you could put in there for the text, Janet, is um, Rachel, so Rachel died and was buried. Yeah, we'll get there in the comments. So Rachel... Okay, you're putting it there. Because <laughs> th that'll be in the comments, we can get those things. But Rachel died and was buried... Dot, dot, dot. Bethlehem. B. So Rachel's grave... Is, is on the way to Bethlehem. Amen? So it's in that vicinity of Bethlehem. So because we read verses 18 to 20, uh, I want your comments to come out of that whole context of verses 18 to 20 because it's very important what was happening here. So what was happening? So what's your comments on Genesis 35 verses 18 to 20? The, so the first mention of Bethlehem, so the first com Not Jacob, but there was a... There was a son being born. I would put a comment. There was a son being born. Wow. And there was the death of a woman. This would, this would be my comments. But any, any other comments? Before I, I help you out a little bit to see something pretty awesome. Yeah, Anita? Anita? What would you? What, what's your comment here about Bethlehem? What are you learning about Bethlehem? The Beth first mention. Oh, I, I was going to talk, talk. <laughs> going to talk about Rachel. I thought perhaps um, she might have been in such excruciating pain at the agony of having her son that she. Di I don't know that she died, and then Jacob renamed him Benjamin. That's exactly is, what happened. Oh. That's exactly what happened. So she was in agony and she, she was giving birth and in the giving of birth, Rachel died and called him Ben-Oni. And if you look in your margin, what does Ben-Oni mean? Doesn't it mean son of my sorrow? Son of my sorrow. So it's very important. This is really important. This has got me. Because, oh, anyway, let me, we'll just do a few comments and then I want to tell you. Because even, even as we're here, I'm getting some wonderful things. So she called him son of my sorrow. She called him. But then he called him Benjamin, which means what? Look in the margin. Son of the right hand. <gasps> so we put in comments here, okay, the naming, the naming of this son happened at Bethlehem. Okay, this is why Bethlehem's important. There was the naming of a son, first called son of my sorrow. Are you seeing something? Yeah. Hey. Jesus. Yeah, because he was both, wasn't he? Yes. He was a man of sorrows, but then he rose from the dead and was seated at the right hand. So this is amazing that, that even at this first mention of Bethlehem, and get this, this is what I'll be putting in my comments already, is it? The woman died and was in anguish at the birth. But then he was renamed son of my right hand after that. Yep. So when the Messiah came forth, what woman died? Well, Israel as the bride in the natural died. And now there's a new one coming. And it was a struggle in the birth. Hallelujah. It's pretty awesome, isn't it? And she called him son of my sorrow. No, I'm, this just came right now. I didn't even get this last night. Is it? But that woman, the bride, Jacob's favourite, she's a picture of the bride, she died at the birth of this son and called him son of my sorrow. And this was all at Bethlehem. But then the father stepped in and said, no, son of my right hand. Hallelujah. So what you're saying is at the birth of the son, in the death of the woman, there is an end of an era. It's the end of the Israel era, yeah, the end of the natural end of Israel that. era yeah. as the people of God. Yeah. At the birth of the son. And he became the son, the man of sorrows. Amen. He was the son of, the, of her sorrow. 
All of this happened at Bethlehem, though. This is what this is. And so, so at Bethlehem, this is why Bethlehem's an important place. Because at Bethlehem, it's, it's the house of bread. Amen. And so this is what happened at the, f- the first time Bethlehem's mentioned. This is what happened. And this is why Bethlehem becomes such an important place. Because prophetically, it's got to do with this son coming into the world. And prof- Yes, and we're going to get there. Yeah, and Rachel weeping for her children. So you're already putting that there. So that's like in Matthew chapter 2. Because cause what happened at the birth of, around that time of the birth of Jesus at Bethlehem? Put, get, yep. They killed all children under the age of two. That's right. And the prophetic word was Rachel weeping for her children. and her children weeping. Yeah. So if you're going to put that in your comments then, see, it's, yeah, this is all around Bethlehem. So Matthew chapter 2 in the comments, put Matthew chapter 2 verse 18. Because even in verse 16, the Bethlehem is in that context. And Rachel, see, Rachel and Benjamin... Have all, got to, have all got a part and parcel in Bethlehem because even here, Rachel's grave was at Bethlehem. Rachel's grave was at Bethlehem. She was buried there. And there was a tomb set up to her there, a memorial. Yep. So the significance of Bethlehem. Amen. The final son of Jacob was born there in Bethlehem. Amen. So the final son of Jacob was born and, and the mother of that son died at Bethlehem and the father named that son, son of my right hand at Bethlehem. So there's a son born in Bethlehem. Amen. So is that pretty cool? Hallelujah. Yes, amen. Okay, and now... Uh, all right, so that, that's, got our, that's got our juices flowing, eh? We're starting to see something. Amen. Now we could just go quickly, what's the next reference? What's the next reference now to Bethlehem? Genesis 48, 7. Genesis chapter 48, verse 7. And what does it say? So we pro- probably just link this to Genesis 35, just to say a double, you know, a double witness that this is what it became known as. This is. But as for me, when I came from Pardon, Rachel died beside me in the land of Canaan on the way, when there was but a little distance to go to Ephraim, Ephrathah, is it? Ephrath, yep. And I buried her there on the way to Ephrathah, that is, Bethlehem. Yep, so just a confirmation, Rachel was buried at Bethlehem. Yep, Rachel was buried at Bethlehem. Hallelujah. But at her death came forth a son, the son of my right hand. Hallelujah. Okay, now there's a few things... Again, I'm just going to pick and choose a few here, okay? So let's go to Ruth now, chapter 2, verse 4. Ruth, chapter 2, verse 4. Yep, Ruth is here. Ruth, chapter 2, and verse 4. Now there are some uh, mentions in Ruth, chapter 1. It'd be worth you looking at that in your own time. Because it... This whole uh, story begins, a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to dwell in the country of Moab. Okay? So it starts with a man of Bethlehem. And, uh, and then Ruth, with Naomi, returned to, to the country of Israel, and they came to Bethlehem. Actually, let's do that one first. Ruth 1, 22, and then 2, 4. Ruth chapter 1, verse 22, and then Ruth chapter 2, verse 4. Okay. Who's got Ruth chapter 1 verse 22? Who would like to read? Put up your hand to read. Ruth, Ruth 1 22. All right, Margaret's there. Hold it up here, Margaret, so it doesn't scratch. 
So Naomi t returned and Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law, with her, who returned from the country of Moab. Now they came to Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest. Amen. So they came to Bethlehem. Just put they came to Bethlehem at the beginning of barley harvest. Okay, what, what would you say in comments here? Uh, well, Who, who's coming back? Well, Ruth is coming back. Ruth and? And, and Naomi. Ruth and Naomi, who are they? Because we've got to think of comments here. Like it's not just this sort of person named Ruth and a person named Naomi coming back. Who are they? Naomi, Naomi's an Israelite. She was married to a man from Bethlehem, Judah. Yep. But so Naomi was a was a was of Israel and she was married to a man from Judah, Bethlehem Judah. And now that man was dead. And now she's bringing Ruth back. Who's Ruth? Foreigner. A foreigner, a Moabites. Cool. So I'll just be putting in comments. I don't know if this is going to actually come out as something or not, but I'll be putting, "Oh, there's a Jew and a Gentile going to Bethlehem." That's what I'll be saying. <laughs> there's a Jew and a Gentile coming back to Bethlehem. Ah, oh, so the house of bread is for Jew and Gentile. That's what I'd be getting at. <laughs> Do you think that's good? Because suddenly she left there and it was totally an Israelite family. But now it's just her and a Gentile coming back and they go back to Bethlehem. What else is important? What's a comment here? Um, Anita's there. Ruth was insistent on going with Naomi. Your God will be my God and your people my people. Yes. And, I, and she had a heart for him. Very good. So this Gentile joined herself to the God of Israel and came back to Bethlehem. Isn't that interesting that she came to Bethlehem first? It's at the time of the barley harvest. It's at the time of the barley harvest. That's an interesting time, isn't it? Especially in connection with the house of bread and so they come back at the time of barley harvest so there's food they're coming back at the look and and what are they looking for because why are they even coming back from moab food there was they're no food hungry. so they're looking i'll put in here they're looking for food and they end up at the house of bread <laughs> hallelujah and it's barley harvest time yep. hey are you getting excited hey there's a little story happen, happening here through this isn't there Wow, so they're looking for food. Now there's a Gentile who's committed herself to the God of Israel, coming back with a Jew, and they, the first place they come back to is the house of bread, and it's harvest time. Hallelujah. Wow. So now Ruth chapter 2 verse 4. Ruth chapter 2 verse 4 is the next reference. Oh, who's in Bethlehem? Okay, yeah, Janet's coming. Yeah, but I just wanted to point out that in verse chapter 1, verse 6, where we're talking about them coming back, it says, they heard that Yahweh had visited his, his people by giving them bread. Hey, let's put that in here, Ruth. Ruth chapter 1, verse 6. Oh, hallelujah. Thank God they, for they'd Mama. Heard, they'd heard Yahweh had visited his people with bread. With bread. Some bread's coming. Let's go back to the house of bread. Let's go looking for some bread. Woo! And there's a Jew and a Gentile going to find the bread. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, this is awesome. This is good. Wow. Bread is coming. All right. Hallelujah. Now Ruth chapter 2 verse 4. Now behold, Boaz oh. came from Bethlehem. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you should say something. Come on. And said to the reapers, Yahweh is with you. And they answered him, Yahweh bless you. Wow. Hallelujah. So here we got, now behold, Boaz. Everyone say, Boaz. Oh, Boaz. Oh, Boaz. <laughs> Boaz came from Bethlehem. Wow. Yes, and obviously this... Uh, because some of us have been reading the Bible for a while and all that, we know that Boaz is a very important man, isn't he? Yeah. Amen. Yes, and, and to this whole story with Ruth. 
Okay, so we know that um, he... So what, anyway, comments here from Ruth chapter 2 verse 4. Comments. Thinking how to put it. Oh, I, anyway, I'm just interested that Boaz came from Bethlehem and they came to Bethlehem. So yeah. the Jew and the Gentile came to, to him Bethlehem. who comes from there. Very good. <laughs> so they, they've come to him who is from there. Amen. They've come to Boaz. or They, they didn't realize they were even trying to find Boaz. But, but they ended up meeting Boaz. And Boaz is coming from Bethlehem. And who's, who's Boaz talking to? In this verse, the reapers, because it's the time of harvest. harvest. Amen. So who, who's this man from Bethlehem? He's the Lord of the harvest. Hallelujah. He's the one looking after the harvest. He's got reapers working for him. Hey, and where did he come from? Bethlehem, the house of bread. Hallelujah. And he's got reapers. There's workers in the harvest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's, there, he's got men working in the harvest. So this makes me think, you know, Matthew chapter 9, verse 35 to 38. Pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into that harvest. He's the Lord of the harvest. <laughs> Hallelujah. Comes from Bethlehem, the house of bread. So these, these, Ruth and Naomi came back into the harvest, into a time of harvest. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, this is wonderful, isn't it? Because they come back and, and firstly, Ruth ends up meeting the other reapers. But finally, from being around the other reapers, who does she finally come into contact with? Boaz. Amen. So how does that happen when people are seeking for bread, they're seeking for food, they're seeking for something in life, and they find some disciples, some of those reapers, some of those workers of the harvest, and all the while, there's an overseer of the harvest watching all this go on. Yeah. And then finally he goes, who's that woman? <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. And this is, all, this is all, the headquarters, if you like, for Boaz is the house of bread. Amen. See, it's like Bethlehem is like the headquarters for the Lord of the harvest. Mm. Hallelujah. Because the son of the right hand was born there. Mm. Amen. Boaz speaks of Yahweh. Yes, he says, Yahweh is with you to the reapers. Mm -hmm. Amen. Jesus said, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age, to those ones going out in the work. Hallelujah. So you can yeah, put that, that he, Boaz blessed in the name of Yahweh, saying Yahweh is with you to the reapers. Amen. And so I'd be putting Matthew 28, 20 there, where Jesus said, teaching them to observe everything I commanded you, lo, I am with you. Yahweh is with you. I am with you to the end of the age. Hallelujah. <laughs> is this good? Yeah. <laughs> and Boaz, it says in verse 5, that Boaz said to his servant who was in charge of the reapers, whose young woman is this? <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah, he's noticing her. She's coming up the ranks. Amen. Yeah, amen. Anyway, this is just amazing, isn't it? So, yes, you're all taking notes. And those of you on, on, the, on the video, I'm just, this is, again, this is just an off-the-cuff study. We, I, I've never studied this before. I had a brief look last night. And, uh, and this is just wonderful because this is how you study. You start seeing things and, and things start firing off. So it's always important we're studying with the Spirit of God. It's not just intellectual what we're doing here. Amen. We just realized Bethlehem is the house of bread. We already know it's the place where the Messiah was born. But then we're finding this out, that the very origin, the first mention of it, had to do with Jacob and Rachel. Rachel being the favorite wife of, of Jacob. He was the one she really wanted. He, she was the one he really wanted. And, and, and now they're, they're having a child, but she dies in that, in that childbirth and brings forth a son signifying the end of an era, but a new son coming. And, but when she looks at him in her death throes, son of my sorrow. 
But then Jacob saw prophetically, no, son of the right hand. The one who would die would rise again. The one who'd be born in Bethlehem would die and rise again and be seated at the right hand of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prophetically, all in the first mention of Bethlehem, the house of bread. Wow. And, yeah, that's right. And then you come to Ruth and you find out here with Ruth that she's, she's a Moabitess, a Gentile. And now she gets joined to a Jewish lady, an Israelite, who was married to someone who came from Bethlehem. And now they're going back. They hear Yahweh has visited his people by giving them bread. And so they go back to Bethlehem, to the house of bread. A Jew and a Gentile coming back to Bethlehem. And it's, would you believe it, it's the time of barley harvest. (laughs) And the reapers are out there working in the harvest. Wow. They're looking, and they're looking for food and the harvest is plentiful. And, and so Ruth gets involved in the harvest and, there's, and, and then Boaz is saying to the reapers, Yahweh is with you, reapers. He, he's sending out his laborers into the harvest and he says, teach them everything I've commanded you and I am with you always till the end of the age. And suddenly Ruth gets into this harvest and starts meeting the reapers. And then Boaz is looking over going, Who's that? She caught my attention. (laughs) All right, Ruth, chapter 4, verse 11. Ruth 4, 11. Yeah, this is an awesome study, eh? I don't know if we're going to have time to get it all into a teaching, but but you can see that the teaching's developing just as we study. Yes, Ruth 4, 11. What does it say there? I'll read it for quickness sake. And all the people who were at the gate and the elders said, We are witnesses. Yahweh make the woman who is coming to your house like Rachel and Leah, the two who built the house of Israel. And may you prosper in Ephrathah and be famous in Bethlehem. So what's going on here? Well, this has actually got to do, this has got to do with redemption. This has got to do with with Boaz redeeming Ruth. And the blessing on this woman. Because can you see something here? Yeah, (laughs) I just saw it. See, remember the origin was Rachel died at Bethlehem. But now there's a blessing for this new wife. Hallelujah. He's redeeming this, this one, Ruth. And, and the blessing is, Yahweh make the woman who is coming to your house like Rachel and Leah, like them, who built the house of Israel. But it's a new one. Hallelujah. It's a new house. May it be like that, but it's a new one. And may you prosper in Ephrathah and be famous in Bethlehem. Redemption. A blessing in Bethlehem. I would even put here a new wife. A new wife. Hallelujah, the bride. Which includes Gentiles. Hallelujah. Which is now a Jew, Boaz, and a Gentile together. Yes, it's a blessing to be fruitful, prosperous, famous in Bethlehem, and it's a Jew and a Gentile together as the new wife. Oh! Yes! (laughs) Hey! Bethlehem, sweet Bethlehem. (laughs) Wow. See? Yes. And uh, so, anyway, you could go on from there and just see. So Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. Amen. So now let's just have a quick look at a few other mentions of Bethlehem now. Um, there's, there's some wonderful things actually. Just got to choose which one. Um, yeah, let's, let's just see in 1 Samuel. 
chapter 16, verse 4. 1 Samuel, chapter 16, verse 4. So this is sort of connected to Ruth, because if you read to the end of Ruth as well, then who, who finally is the famous offspring of Boaz and Ruth? David. David. Hallelujah. So the house of bread now. Is pre- yeah, here we go. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 4. You got it up there? Okay, any, anybody got it to read? 1 Samuel 16, 4. Okay. And um, can somebody get ready? 1 Samuel 17, verse 15. Somebody get that and be ready to read straight after that. So 1 Samuel 17, 15. Now this is, we're going to read 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 4. Do the first one. And Samuel did that which Yahweh spoke and came to Bethlehem and the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, Comest thou peaceably? Okay, so we could just say Samuel came to Bethlehem. And what do we know, what did Samuel come to do at Bethlehem? Hand up, Anita. What did Samuel come to do at Bethlehem? Anoint David as king. To anoint David as king. So we put that in here, if you read the, the more around the context, amen, Samuel as the prophet was directed by God to go to Bethlehem and so the anointing of the king happened at Bethlehem. The anointing of God's choice of king was in the house of bread. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, this house of bread. So the, the king David was anointed to be the king He didn't become the king there, but he was anointed to be the king in Bethlehem. Hallelujah. 16 verse 4. But the next one is chapter 17, 15. That's what I was saying. If someone could get that ready. Who's got 17, 15? Diane does. Good. So chapter 17 verse 15. But David occasionally went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. So we get we get a bit of an insight, amen, into um, 1715. Okay, so he feed, fed his sheep in Bethlehem. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah. So what do we, we learn? Yes, that David was a shepherd, that he had sheep in Bethlehem, his father's sheep. He looked after his father's sheep mm-hmm. in Bethlehem. That's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. And that's where the food was. And that's where the food was. The food was in Bethlehem. He fed his father's sheep in Bethlehem. But David really liked being out where the battle was too. So he'd go out of Bethlehem to battle and then go back to feed his father's sheep. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So he was anointed to be king at Bethlehem. And then we learn that he also, David was getting very much interested in going onto the getting around the army of the Lord. But then he would go back and feed his sheep in Bethlehem and, and so yeah, a bit of prophetic significance there. Okay. I think because of the sake of time, um we'll just go to the Micah one. Last one in the Old Testament, Micah chapter five verse two. But there is a story there and it's in second uh, Samuel and it's also in 1 Chronicles about how when David was um, was he the king there? Yes he was. When he was the or was he still on the run? No he was the king. And he remember that uh, Jerusalem hadn't been taken yet fully and and he, and he actually said oh there, I wish there was somebody I wish I could have a drink from the well of Bethlehem. And so then some of his army broke through and got some water from the well at Bethlehem. So there's probably something there about the well at Bethlehem. So, there, so not only was there food in Bethlehem, but there's a well in Bethlehem. And David reckoned it was good water. That water from the well at Bethlehem. Amen. Is it? In Bethlehem, is that Jake? No, it's a different one. But anyway, we go to Micah chapter 5 verse 2. So you could look at the study and check out that section that deals with David wanting water from, from the well at Bethlehem. But Micah chapter 5 verse 2, Catherine. But you Bethlehem Ephrath, though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Jerusalem, whose goings forth are from of old 
from everlasting. Mm. The wonderful prophecy. E eternally separating Bethlehem as a, as a place of eternal significance. Amen. But out of you, Bethlehem, out of you shall come one to be ruler from everlasting. So what's the comments we'd make here? Yeah, it's a messianic prophecy. A messianic prophecy. A prophecy concerning the Messiah. And, and obviously we see from the whole outset, from Genesis, through Ruth, through Samuel, to Micah, we're seeing the thread. Amen. Bethlehem was the place where Rachel died, but then the one who was the son of my sorrow, but also then the son of the right hand, was born there. Hallelujah. Then in Ruth, we see this awesome prophetic picture of, uh, of the house of bread being the place where a Jew and a Gentile went back to find bread. They came in harvest. The Lord of the harvest is there. And then there's a marriage between the Jew and the Gentile, if you like, at the house of bread. Amen. That there's a whole new uh, wife that comes far forth. Because in Genesis, the wife died. Rachel died. But now in Ruth, you see prophetically that there's a new wife coming up that involves Gentiles as well. Hallelujah. And then you see in Samuel that, that Samuel went to Bethlehem to anoint God's king, who was David. And linking that with Ruth, the offspring of, of Ruth and Boaz finally was David. They came from that lineage. And so now Samuel goes to anoint David as the next king in Bethlehem, the house of bread. So the house of bread becomes the place of the, of the anointing of Messiah. He goes and feeds his father's sheep in Bethlehem. Amen. So there's food in Bethlehem for the sheep. He feeds his father's flock. Hallelujah. And now in Micah chapter 5 verse 2, we're seeing now the prophecy that out of Bethlehem, even though it's just a little fella, Bethlehem's not a big bustling city. It's not a big play. It's, it's really just a country town. Amen. And God's always like that, isn't he? He loves, the, he loves the underdog, you know. He loves the little guy <laughs> coming up. And so out of Bethlehem comes a ruler to shepherd God's people, to rule, to be, one to be ruler. And where does he come from? He's going to be born in Bethlehem, but where does he come from? Everlasting. He comes from eternity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this is the eternal one. The eternal one decided that the house of bread was to be the place of his birth in the earth. Hallelujah. And so yes, now the food for every generation has come from the house of bread. Hallelujah. The bread of life was born in the house of bread. The I am who is the bread who came down from heaven was born in the house of bread. Hallelujah. The, <laughs> the son of my right hand was born in the house of bread. Hallelujah. Wow. Hallelujah. I was just thinking one thing. You see in the, um, the, the, the wise men, they went to Bethlehem after Joseph and Mary had moved out of the stable and had moved into a house there. So it's like they, they settled there for a little bit. In Bethlehem, got a house. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then the wise men come and find him at the house and they have the gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. Amen. And um, it's the, uh, the myrrh, right? That's, the, uh, that's like a spice, isn't it? For burial. Son of my sorrow. And they've got the gold. Son of my right hand. Royalty. Hallelujah. Isn't that beautiful? So even prophetically, the gifts brought to him were outworking even what happened in Genesis. Son of my sorrow, son of my right hand. Jesus became both. Hallelujah. Wonderful. Amen. And so now just to, to finish off this study in Matthew. So we go down to... So we just go into the next section of the concordance now where it says Bethlehem, just one word. 
And uh, we just see in Matthew chapter 2, Matthew chapter 2, In verse 1, I'll read it, Matthew 2, 1. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. So after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea. So we got it clearly in the scriptures, Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea. And it was in the days of Herod the king and there were wise men. And so here we can say, yeah, the wise men came looking for Jesus. And then the next, the next references are verse 5 and 6, which we sort of looked at. So when they came to Jerusalem, they were saying, Where is he who is born King of the Jews? And in, in the answer came, so they said to him in verse 5, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, hearkening back to Micah chapter 5 verse 2, but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Five and six. And probably the comment that I would want to make, just as an extra thing there, is that it would be a shepherd ruler. That he would be a shepherd ruler. Again, coming back to the fact that he feeds his sheep in Bethlehem. Amen. He feeds his sheep in Bethlehem. He's a shepherd ruler. Praise the Lord. So the shepherd king comes out of Bethlehem, the house of bread, where he feeds his sheep. And then, going on in verse 7 and 8, it says, Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared, and he sent them to Bethlehem. So he sent them to Bethlehem, you could just say, and said, Go and search carefully for the young child, when you found him, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. <laughs> mm. Yep. All right, so Herod sent them to Bethlehem. So they were sent to Bethlehem to find the king. So I would probably put a comment as the king is found in Bethlehem. The king is found in the house of bread. Hallelujah. You want to find the king? Go to the house of bread. And so are we, are we meant to be a, a type, if you like, or are we meant to be that fulfillment, to be the house of bread? Are we meant to be as the house of God? And so this is where it comes in, Diane, where you can bring it in, start to bring it in here to say, well, where are people going to find the king now? They're not going to go to that physical place, Bethlehem. Bethlehem is the house of bread. So where, where are people going to find bread today? Where, where are people going to find Jesus the King today? Where did you find Jesus? In the house of God. In other words, you met somebody who started telling you about Jesus and, then, and, and that started to feed you. It got you something, oh, that, that tastes good. Hallelujah. Amen. So people need to be sent to the house of bread to find the King. And wise people are looking for him there. Yeah, right. Amen. And so the next, the next reference is Matthew 2.16. And this is where we get 2.16 to 18 where it brings in about Rachel again. So 2.16, Then Herod, when he saw that he was deceived by the wise men, was exceedingly angry, and he sent forth and put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem. And in all its districts from two years old and under, yeah, what, so what would you say here? What's the, what's the comment here? All male children in Bethlehem, two years and under. All, put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem and in all its districts from two years old and under according to the time which he had determined from the wise men. Jesus could have been anywhere up to two years of age at this time. Yes, that's they a good thing to realise. Yes, Margaret? wanted to, to wipe out any possibility of this person uh, going on. Yes. 
So could you say could you say that yeah, Bethlehem is a place also of persecution? Yes, it is. Yes. So Bethlehem is a place of persecution and weeping. Yeah. So kings are scared of Bethlehem mm -hmm. because there is a king is that's found in Bethlehem. That's the king of all kings. Hallelujah. So to this day, governments try to still wipe out Christians. And why? Because there's bread among them. There's a king among them. Hallelujah. Yep. And that's... So it's a, it's a place of another king. Bethlehem, the house of bread, is the place of another king. A greater king. A true king. And, and, then, and so it was fulfilled, you could also say from verse 18 then too, that it was fulfilled then the word that said Rachel weeping for her children. So if you like, there's a little bit of a fulfillment here of son of my sorrow. Jesus is like a sharp two-edged sword. There's, a, there's sorrow but glory. Amen. Yeah. Amen. There is sorrow and glory in Bethlehem. <laughs> but they're both necessary. The, this one. Amen. So the next reference, we'll just finish this off. Luke chapter 2 and verse 4 is the next reference there in the New Testament to Bethlehem. So Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. So I'll just put here in the text, city of David, which is called Bethlehem. So here we have another name for Bethlehem. What's it? It says here the city of David. So Bethlehem is included in the city of David. And we mostly just think of Jerusalem being the city of David, don't we? But here it says... The city of David, which is called Bethlehem. Hallelujah. So, what, what, what does this sort of speak to us of in a comment? Again, it's, it's, re, it's confirming the messianic reality, isn't it? That, that Bethlehem is the city of David, who was the great king. Yeah. Amen. All right. So we could just probably have that as a confirmation. I just wanted to keep this one in there. Luke 2.15, because remember he went back to feed the, the sheep in Bethlehem. So in Luke chapter 2, verse 15, it says, So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. Hallelujah. Amen. So the shepherds went to Bethlehem. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you enjoying the study? Mm. Yeah. Yep. Hallelujah. And so the final, final one is John 7 verse 42. John chapter 7 verse 42. And it's in the context again of people saying, but will the, because they were thinking Jesus came from Galilee, you know, will the Christ come out of Galilee? Verse 42, has not the scripture said that the Christ comes from the seed of David and from the town of Bethlehem, where David was? So my comment here would be, what? What would your comment be here? So the verse, the verse actually says, uh, has not the scripture said that the Christ comes from the seed of David and from the town of Bethlehem, where David was? So what would your comment be? Put up your hand, Rob. Fulfilling prophecy. Fulfilling prophecy. Uh, prophecy coming to pass. Uh. Yes, and that the expectation of the people was that the Christ would come from Bethlehem. Yeah. Messiah would be coming from Bethlehem. Yeah, fulfilled. <coughs> Sorry? The lineage, of David. the lineage of David, he said. Yes. So that Christ is of the seed of David from the town of Bethlehem. So that was correct. They had a correct understanding. They just didn't realize that Jesus was actually born in Bethlehem, but he grew up in Galilee. 
So they're thinking, oh, he comes from Galilee. It can't be the Messiah. They needed to ask Mary and say, Mary, where was he born, actually? Yeah, <laughs> yeah what's on his passport? <laughs> Hallelujah. So there you go. A pretty awesome study. Amen. <laughs> so, again, just to tell you what we would do next, we don't have time to go through it in, in, for today, but what do we do once we've done this part of the study? By, by going through all the verses? We now ask questions from the scripture. Questions to do with what, when, why, how, where. Yep. So, again, you'd ask questions like, what does the name Bethlehem mean? What happened at Bethlehem? Who was anointed at Bethlehem? Um, who came, who was sent to Bethlehem? What sort of people and why? Why did people go to Bethlehem? Because then you can talk about Ruth and Naomi, you can talk about the wise men. Amen? Who goes to Bethlehem? Why do people go to Bethlehem? To look for food. Amen? Because it's called the house of bread. They heard Yahweh had visited his people. Amen. And even the wise men heard that Yahweh had visited his people. Yeah. Amen. They got wind of that. They came looking for the king. Yeah, so who, who is found in Bethlehem? The king is found in Bethlehem. And yeah, Boaz is the Lord of the harvest is in Bethlehem. That's awesome, isn't it? That's what you ask these questions. Who, who is in Bethlehem? The king is in Bethlehem. The Lord of the harvest is in Bethlehem. The reapers are even in Bethlehem. Hallelujah. What is found in Bethlehem? Well, the Messiah is found, but there's also bread found in Bethlehem. Because it's harvest time in Bethlehem. Hallelujah. Who died at Bethlehem? Well, Rachel died. But what did she bring forth? A son. Hallelujah. Son of my sorrow and a son of the right hand. Hallelujah. So do you see you ask these questions. Amen. And then you, you answer from these scriptures. Hallelujah. And then, and then once you've asked the questions and given your answers from the scriptures, maybe ask four or five questions, have about two or three scripture verses for each question or so, then what do you do? You need to set out title. So you're going to come up with a, a whiz-bang title. Whiz-bang means a really wonderful title catchy, something that grabs your attention. Amen. Hallelujah. So anyway, have a think about it, what you would call it. And then you have an introduction, which is going to be luring people into why. Why are we going to study Bethlehem? What's important about Bethlehem? There's amazing things about Bethlehem in the scriptures that, that show us God's plan and purpose. Amen. Then you're going to go through maybe three of those points, uh, the questions that you answered in the body there, answering some questions. Amen. What's Messianic prophecy, Messianic prophecy fulfilled in Bethlehem. Yeah. Amen. And then after you've got through those points, you're going to have a conclusion and you're going to have an application. Time to come to the house of bread. Find the king. Hallelujah. Who wants food which lasts forever? Hallelujah. Who wants to come to the house of bread and find the, the one, the bread of life, who is the king? The kingdoms, in, you, you find the king in Bethlehem. Hallelujah. But remember, there's persecution in Bethlehem. Human governments are afraid of Bethlehem because of the one who's found in Bethlehem. So there will be persecution in Bethlehem. Hallelujah. But God's protection is also on his king. Hallelujah. Amen. <clears throat> yes, there's a new wife. Hallelujah. There's a marriage of Jew and Gentile that happens at Bethlehem. Hallelujah. Amen. So I hope you're blessed. Hallelujah. And unfortunately, yeah, we haven't been able to go through the whole thing now of putting it into that teaching frame. But look at session one, look at session two that we did. 
And you'll see that process that you can use the study we just did to then put it into that framework of, of presenting it as a teaching. So it's been a very exciting study looking at Bethlehem. I've been very excited. Amen. I've never done it before. And just some of the things that have come out from this study have just been wonderful. Amen. So may the Lord Jesus bless you. Amen.